Oh, no. Look at this. And you definitely Logano. don't want to end up like this. Logano, yeah, this heavy exactly. contact on the front of this car. Oh, it's the end of the back stretch. So he is apparently wrecked off. Turn two. I'm guessing wrecked off turn two and hit the end of the yeah. back stretch. Heavy, heavy damage to the 22. Wow. And this goes back to what I was saying about the 17. Um, you know, you don't want to go out there and have damage and put yourself behind. you got to creep up to it, even if it takes a whole stage. I think that's 28 laps for Logano. We were just talking about running the entire session. That's what Joey was doing. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happened to this car and what he has to say. This is a tire that I have circled. This is a track that you can run too low on air pressure. We saw it last week at practice get the 99 and the 9. Both had rear tires go down that caused accidents. Um, I don't know what happened to Joey Logano. Paul Wolf over there at the top left, arms crossed, looking at the monitor. I'm sure he's wondering as well. The MR safety crew down and there. To all the tires are flat now, yeah. so I have no idea how he yeah. kind of got yeah. here. It's That's a backup car that Logano will have to go to uh, and probably will end this session. There was about two and a half minutes to go when Logano, and we take a look here, yellow down at the bottom of the track, drifting up. And get sideways trying to correct it. 28 laps on his tires. I'm a little shocked he was running the bottom unless he was just getting a feel or letting a car go. Um, you saw the right rear pop, I think, yeah. sliding, right? So it definitely yeah. had air as he was spinning. Yeah, it just as, as he comes off at that angle, when it jumps out from under you, you're putting, you're tugging on the wheel a little bit to the left, and it just rotates, and it rotated all the way around, man. That yes. is going to end that session for Group B as far as the practice session. So that will conclude it. If they didn't learn what they needed to, uh, those two and a half minutes are gone now. So uh, looking at his radio communication, it seems like that I, us and every competitor here is comparing to Kyle Larson. Well, Kyle had moved down to the bottom. Um, so I think they've asked Joey to go, hey, we'll go around the bottom and see where we stack up against Larson. So that answers the question of why he was at the bottom of one yeah. or two. Um, it's just to see what you're – it's one thing to keep running the top, okay, yeah. but let's try to learn as much as we can, run the bottom a couple laps to see what our car needs. That's where Larson is. They even gave him a lap time that Larson ran, something to compare to. So that answers the question why he was on the bottom. Yeah. Um, and listen, people can say, well, they, well, if I'm Paul Wolf and I have Joey Logano, he's a champ. I'm going to ask him to do whatever I think I need, bottom, top, middle, access lane. Like, like Lars Logano is as great as they come, right? Champ, he does the thing. Um, it just proves how hard these cars are to drive, yeah. right? Um, um, he wrecked on his own. Yeah, and l listen, and you, that, that's a great point you just made about let's mo go to the bottom and see where we're at. Because we look at these five-lap averages, 10-lap averages, 15. These guys are willing to throw that 10-lap average away to go back and try to learn something. Let's go back to the bottom and run a 39-second lap. Let's go back and run a 38-second lap, whatever it may take. So we have some knowledge moving forward. It's not just let's hammer it at the top and be the best at, at, and, and at the average. Yeah, if you look at Larson's lap time, right, it is a really, really perfect yes. kind of fall off of a tenth of lap. And then the last two laps fall off like a half second. And I couldn't quite put my finger on what was happening there. And now we know he went to the bottom of the race. And why do you do that? Well, look, so when you go to Bristol, the top's going to get clogged. If you go to Martinsville, the bottom gets clogged. When on old tires, you're going to – the top's going to be clogged. Everybody's going to be running the top. So you go to the bottom to see what your car can do. And right here, he just sees that slow slide, which the concern about that is you kind of get all the way across to the inside wall. Yep, just yep. makes a little contact with the inside wall. I don't believe there's safer barrier on that part that he hit. I think he hit cement back there. And so a lot of damage That's a good to the question. front. Yeah. I'd love to see that. I would be shocked if there's no safer barrier down the yeah, back Yeah, I would too. It, but it didn't look like there was. When, but when you look at the angle where he's coming out of the corner, you, you look at the racetrack. You know, if, if, we, if we play that again, you see how the racetrack flattens out. When you run the high line, there's a little bit more bank because it's progressive bank, but there's a little bit, and you come down straight off that banking. When you're on the bottom and coming back across the racetrack, it just falls out from under you. And as it fell out from under him, that his car was already in that in that position after 28 laps running the speeds he was running, just got out from under him. 